Okay, let's take a look at a few more details about mitosis. So if you're looking at this actual diagram here of a sample of cells, you should be able to identify which cells are in one of the stages of mitosis. In other words, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase. I can see right here, there's a whole bunch of cells that look like they are in interphase. So there's nothing really fancy uh, going on. The fancy ones like this, 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 you should be able to figure out if they're anaphase or metaphase or in prophase and if you can calculate all of this and count up the total number of cells that is here and the number that are actually in mitosis it can help you figure out something called the mitotic index and it just gives you an idea and you can actually uh, identify what type of cell this might be because different types of organisms have different types of cells that divide at different rates and so if you can tell which cells are actually in mitosis and you can do a simple division you just count up the total number of cells that you see in your sample and then you actually uh, on top of that you're going to put the number of cells that are in mitosis so if you say this is telophase this is telophase so every check mark that i put is something that i'm saying is in the process of mitosis so i'm avoiding all the ones that look like they're in interphase and then you do a division and then you'll get a number called the mitotic index so it's something pretty easy to do uh, it's a good activity to practice just pull up any image on the internet of mitosis and see if you can calculate the mitotic index okay here's another diagram to take a look at i drew this diagram you're not going to find any diagram that looks like this in a textbook and this is what really messed me up um, when I was studying mitosis when I was younger, because every diagram you had, they had a very simplified version of mitosis for human cells, and they never showed every single chromosome that's in there, and there's good reason why. Look at how many little lines you have to draw if you want to represent all 46 chromosomes. So I've recorded a few other videos about mitosis and the difference between chromatids and chromosomes, but in general right here, you should be able to see uh, that this is interphase, uh, let's see if I can write really fast. This is interphase, and then we get to here. Now we're looking at prophase, and in prophase, you can start to see all the chromosomes after they've uh, condensed through supercoiling. But the idea here is that if you actually count every single chromosome up in here, and I've drawn, this is still a diagram form, but it keeps track of every single mm, bit of DNA that you might be able to see here. So you should see that there are 23 red X's in here and 23 blue X's, which represent a total of 46 chromosomes that are present. If you're confused about why it's an X and not just a single line like the ones we see down here, it's because during interphase, during interphase, in particular the S phase, which stands for synthesis, every single chromosome actually got duplicated uh, through replication. I don't know where that little line popped up every single line actually gets duplicated so that's why there's x's i still count this guy right here as one chromosome so there are 46 chromosomes in here and as they start all moving towards the equator for metaphase you can see all these spindle fibers and i had to draw a ton of spindle fibers uh, as they get, all get kind of moved towards the center and then when they get split and so this is obviously metaphase down here and then here is anaphase when they get split you'll notice that the x's Oops, it's supposed to be touching right here. Ah, let's try that again. Each of these X's actually gets split in the center, and then you end up with the sister chromatids actually separating. So you should have watched a previous video about mitosis so you know what these phases are about, but I'm just trying to show you what every single actually chromosome is doing when you see the entire diagram with all 46 chromosomes in there, and they're just getting separated. It doesn't matter which side they, uh, they go to because we're actually just splitting the sister chromatids and then you should end up here and i think i've drawn this correctly there should be actually 46 chromosomes in there 23 blue ones and 23 red ones uh, those 23 one set of 23 came from your mom and the other set of 23 came from your dad but this is not this is not meiosis we're not making uh, sperm cells and egg cells right now we're just talking about general mitosis where we're just copying regular cells in there so this is telophase where everything gets split up afterwards a cytokinesis is actually the literal splitting of the actual cell it's kind of different for animals and plant cells so we're going to see that in a little bit as well too but uh, pause go back take a look at this diagram make sure you fully understand that we are looking at human cells here because the number is 46 chromosomes that we should be actually studying and be seeing right now
Okay, now let's take a look at cytokinesis, which is just the end part of everything. So if you have uh, instant pudding made anytime, instant pudding made anytime, interphase is like the main part of the cell cycle. These four letters represent mitosis, the stages of mitosis. And at the end, uh, so you could, some people like to call this uh, a separate stage. It can get confusing, whatever. Cytokinesis is literally the splitting of the cytoplasm. And so you can see here in animal cells, we're splitting it by literally kind of uh, pinching. Imagine taking a, ri uh, a piece of string and tying it around this three-dimensional thing and then tightening it, and it's going to pinch it off and turn it into two separate cells. Obviously, for plant cells, it's a little more more complex because the cells are rigid and you have cell walls in there as well too so the process is a little bit different so this occurs after mitosis and in the plants and plant cells the cell wall is formed across the equator which is the center point of where these two cells are trying to uh, split up uh, with the plasma membrane forming on both sides so the cell wall is actually being built is being built with the plasma membranes being separated on both sides. Whereas for uh, animal cells, it can be argued that because they don't have such a rigid uh, outer structure, um, this plasma membrane is much more flexible. And so that can actually pinch off as we would expect with a fluid mosaic model of the plasma membrane. So here it is, animal cells, just mentioned that. Uh, some words, cleavage furrow, I don't know why they call that the cleavage furrow, but I guess it starts bending down. Uh, like this and so someone thought it'd be funny to call that a cleavage furrow.